Welcome to worship. We're so glad you are joining us. If you are not a member of our church family and would like to get connected, check out our website at refluthks.org. Or if you'd like to get on our mailing list, you can write to info at refluthks.org. Today, Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And then he asks, who do you say that I am? It's a wonderful question for all of us for reflection. And with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. 
Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. reading comes from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you are hewn, and to the quarry from which you are dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, and he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord, Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for my teachings will go out from me, and my justice for a light to all peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look to the earth beneath. 
For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never end. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to a measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we, who are many, are in one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teach in teaching, the exhorted in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, and the compassion in cheerfulness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel lesson is from the 16th chapter of Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. In this time of pandemic, we know that when Jesus says, on this rock I will build my church, he is not talking about a building. Contrary to some recent tweeting, we do not need this building in order to pray, to serve, or even to worship. Don't get me wrong, this is a magnificent space, but it is not necessary to do Christ's work. Right now, our building is much more for the business of the congregation than it is for worship. Royce is here during the week, and we prepare these worship videos in this room. Our awesome finance people come in to care for donations and for bills. Our playground is used a lot, and people read our sign. But right now, the presence of the church is stronger on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube than it is at 7601 East 13th Street North in Wichita. Our gospel lesson today includes the very first use of the word church in scripture. In Greek, the word is ekklesia or ecclesia, and it means a gathering of people who are called out to serve. There is no mention of bricks or mortar or even drywall in the definition. The ecclesia, the church, is people. To be the church then has two important components. The church is a gathering that is called out to serve. In true community, we are companions. Even if we are unable to be together in person, we are gathered. Companions pray for one another and serve one another. 
One of our members recently told me about a Sunday when he picked up the phone and called a church member he really missed. And that felt so good that he called another member of the church. And when he finished that call, it felt so good that he called a third member. In those phone calls, the church gathered. This pandemic has revealed much about humanity in general and much about the church. Last Sunday, I delivered our 35 pair of scissors to St. Paul's. That afternoon, over 400 scissors were donated, more than double the goal that had been set by Partners for Wichita. We may not have felt like the strong and mighty church as we brought in our bags of scissors or slipped them through Reformation's mail slot, but we were the church in a big way last Sunday. And by the way, some of these scissors will be part of a backpack distribution on August 31st, and others will go to the Family Preservation Program. Big things are happening, and we, the church, are part of them. But in this pandemic time, it is easy to feel small and isolated. Most of us have those feelings during this time. And when you have those feelings, I want you to think of this story. Several centuries ago, a huge and heavy bronze bell sunk to the bottom of a river in China. Over the months and years, the efforts of various engineers to raise the bell had failed. And then finally, a prayerful missionary asked for permission to make an attempt to raise the bell, on the condition that the bell would be given to the church if he was successful. After he received permission, his congregation began to gather an immense number of bamboo poles. The poles were taken down by divers and one by one were fastened to the bell. After thousands of bamboo poles were fastened, the bell began to move. As other poles were added, the bell was lifted to the surface. You see, bamboo is so buoyant that it could lift that bell. Now you may think that your piece of bamboo is too small or too light to make any difference in the world, but every one of us are important in God's church. Remember, the church, the ecclesia, is both gathered and called to serve. For some of us, this means being called to a different place than we had expected or a different career than we had imagined. For all of us, it means being called out of our comfort zone to serve others by getting our hands dirty, pulling weeds or picking up trash, or perhaps by making a quilt or serving breakfast, putting together a food basket or donating school supplies to people we will never meet. And sometimes it means talking about our faith with someone who doesn't know God's love. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The church is a gathering of companions, but we are different from being a social club or even a service organization. Because in the midst of our gathering, in fact at the center of it, the foundation piece, the cornerstone, there is Jesus our Savior. Amen.
us pray. God, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ here and around the world. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs, that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. We pray for the wildfires in California to be controlled and extinguished, for firefighters, for homeowners, and for Mount Cross Camp. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators and magistrates, mayors and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of people. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved in trouble or adversity or sick and in need of care. Those on our prayer list, those we hold in our heart, and those whose requests came to us this week, Dakota, Bonnie, Sheila, and John. You call us to be your church in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. In this scary and strange back to school time, we pray for students, teachers, parents, and school staff, that decisions are made carefully and wisely for the safety of all, that fears and anxieties may be reduced so that the joy of teaching and learning will predominate. You are the everlasting rock from which we were hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, wherever you are today, come to the table of the Lord and receive nourishment for your journey. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Thank you.